Okay, so let's look at this um, four-stage hypothesis. So the first one says the abiotic synthesis of small organic molecules like amino acids and nucleotides. Okay, abiotic, that means non-living. Synthesis is things kind of being formed, right? So if we scroll down here, we can talk about how that was tested. So Oberyn and Haldane were going to be some scientists that came up with um, the idea of what conditions existed on the early Earth and what elements were present and that type of stuff. And so going along with that was the Miller-Urey experiment that um, talked about how this hall kind of gave us amino acids and nucleotides. So if we look at our power, whoops, <laughs> our PowerPoint, I can show you. Oh, uh, there we go, the Miller Array experiment. Okay, so what they did is using Oprin and Haldane stuff. Here are going to be all of the um, elements that they thought were present in molecules. Um, and so those are in their fake atmosphere. Um, then we've got water vapor that's coming up into here and it's going to kind of rain down and then we've got our um, electrical spark um, that's going to signify lightning. So what's going to happen is you've got all these elements up there, you have an electrical spark, you've got water. When that actually um, sparks these things and rains down here and they collected it, they found organic compounds. So they do find amino acids and nucleotides. So that's how they think the building blocks were actually formed, through lightning and the proper elements there at the right time. Now, there are people who don't agree with that experiment because they say that they um, provided a very, very strongly reducing environment that's believed that was there. And if they go to what they actually think was there, it doesn't work. But in my opinion, I think that's pretty awesome that they can get that to happen. Okay, so then the next part, joining of these molecules into polymers of proteins and nucleic acids. Well, let's look at this. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, so we're talking about a bunch of those coming together. Nucleotides are the building blocks of nucleic acids, so we're talking about a bunch of those coming together. So maybe, just maybe, you remember from Bio 111, that term for when we join a whole bunch of monomers together to form a big polymer? And hopefully you're thinking dehydration synthesis? Yeah, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, so let's, um, I think I've got a PowerPoint slide that can kind of show, yeah, remember dehydration synthesis? Okay, let's go to my drawing because you know how awesome my drawings are and I can show you what I'm talking about. So um, we've got our big droplet of water and in it we have a bunch of amino acids, amino acids, amino acids, right? And what's going to happen is we've got the crust that's solidifying that's very hot, right? So when this drops onto this hot earth, what's going to happen is the water is going to evaporate, right? And that is going to produce a dehydration synthesis type of situation happening, right? Because if we look at this right here, you can see what's happening is water is being removed, just like it's evaporating off of that hot earth, and that's how we got all of those to join together. So they have actually tested that. Um, if we go down here... Um, they have actually caused polymerization to happen by dripping solutions of these organic monomers onto hot sand, clay, or rock, and that vaporizes the water, concentrates the monomers, and causes them to form polymers. So it's kind of like it's creating its own dehydration synthesis. So that's pretty cool, too. Then the next part is going to be the origin of self-replication. So what they've done is now they've got their nucleotides, RNA, right? And they do believe RNA came before DNA um, because they're saying that DNA is how we store it, but RNA is what you actually need for transcription and translation, if you remember. So what's going to happen is they've taken RNA, they have put it into a lab, and they have added zinc. And what happens is it will actually self-replicate, and it has less than 1% error. To me, super creepy, but super cool, right? So they can get the self-replication process to happen. So we've got building blocks, we've got polymers formed from those monomers, now we've got self-replication happening. All we need is to have it enclose into its own protobiont. And so that's the last um, stage in our four-part hypothesis up here, is the packaging of these molecules into protobionts, which are droplets that have a membrane that has a different internal chemistry from their surroundings. 
Um, technically, they haven't gotten that to happen without a little bit of a nudge, but um, they're getting close to it, and you should get close to it and, and make a lot of money on that because you don't want rich people making more money, right? So anyway, um, that fourth part is the one that still isn't perfectly tested in a lab. But pretty cool that they have actually figured out all of those four stages. So in the next video, we'll get into um, a little bit more, if you look here, um, about how we organize life.